Camera's on. So the big thing about this, right? You, how long do you think you've been dealing with these cracked heels? Um, it's probably been, honestly, all my life. But it's only been like this bad. I would say ever since I started working for uh, the company I work for now, and we're just like making sure that you're on your feet pretty much all day. And, and that is the whole issue. So we talked about it. Cracked heels happen because of two things. Too much pressure and dryness. And so if we have too much pressure, we get this hard skin and that pressure will cause, well the hard skin buildup will cause the skin to snap and then the moisturizer cannot get in. So that's why these cracks don't sometimes get better. Um, we're gonna go nice and slow. If anything's too sensitive, you let me know. And it's just the physical scraping to get it down to the healthier part so the cracks can heal, reducing the pressure on the heel and then the body can get better. But because of the nature of your job, it's really, really, really about reducing the stress on the back of this heel in your work boot. So more cushioning underneath the heel and I think we need to do something to protect the back of it as well. Do you wear a thick sock for work or a thin one? Uh, thinner socks. Is it just to give it more room in the boot? Um, yes, it does like, that is part of it. And it's, uh, they're compression socks as well. Okay. Because I find they just help with foot pain a little bit more. So. I know it's gonna be a little sensitive sometimes as we get lower down. When you start to feel sensitivity, you let me know. We're gonna get some really thick foot cream, maybe like the O'Keeffe's for cracked heels. We start lathering that on, adding Vaseline even on top of that to really create the seal. You keep up with the buffing, with the pumice stone, maybe something more aggressive. We come back in six to eight weeks, keep cleaning it up. You have the indoor slipper to reduce more pressure at home. Maybe adding an extra gel cushion in your work boot. And we try to get these heels to close up. Now, do you think orthotics would be a good thing for me? In terms of orthotics fixing a cracked heel, no. They won't fix the cracked heel because this again is the pressure from just the amount of weight that the foot is carrying and the nature of your job and the boot itself. But what orthotics can help for you is because you're on your feet a lot, it does help reduce foot stress and foot pain. So that is a, a thing that can definitely help. I'll let you know if it hurts. Okay. I'm not a shy person about that with those kinds of things. For, oh, <laughs> that's good because if it hurts, it hurts, right? Just let me know. Again, we're going to take down as much as we can today. And this is the, the, the big issue. People with cracks just start throwing more, you know, moisturizer on top, but that hard skin is acting like a layer of protection. So it doesn't allow that stuff to actually get in there and work. And then unless you have truly a scalpel or a knife, it's really hard to get these thick calluses off. So it's gonna be awesome for you to see because, do you watch the videos or just your wife? Oh no, I watch the videos too. <laughs> You're gonna really get to see up close of more healthier skin, getting to where the skin looks like it is attached or closed. But the indoor slipper is very important. And then more cushioning in the in the work boot and even maybe something that goes a little bit higher to go on the back of the heel. So there is a cushion cotton uh, compression sock from Sigveris, that's the one company I use here. Yeah. And so it's a little bit thicker and so it does give you a little bit more padding. So that might be something to think about wearing. I know it takes up a little bit more room, but cushioning is a good thing. At this point, I just want my feet to be, like, not... Bugging you? Yeah. So the orthotic, again, do you get general foot pain? Yeah. So I think the orthotic is a good thing to have, and I try to make something that does have more cushioning or padding. So we can see there was, a, again, tons and tons of hard skin on top. We're getting to the more the pink or normal-looking skin. 
And now we can see where now you doing the pumice stone or maybe using more of a rasp style can actually maintain this much better. So here, custom orthotic takes three to four weeks to be made. Okay. You shouldn't be standing, walking, or pressing when taking a mold for an orthotic. We want to capture as much of a high arch as possible. So when you are standing and the foot collapses naturally with pressure, with time, with, with activity, it's going to actually be supported properly. If you take a mold when the foot's standing, pressing, it, the, the, the orthotic comes a little bit lower, so it doesn't have as much support. Oh, okay. Takes three to four weeks to be made after we take the scan. If you have insurance, what will happen? We normally put a deposit for half the amount today. Then we pay the remaining amount when you pick it up and we give you a whole package to submit. So that's something we can also do today. We can do a next appointment. But yeah, I agree. If you're having general foot pain, the orthotic will be helpful. And I'll make it again with a little bit more padding and cushioning for work boot. Um, I, my work's weird. I need like a very specific thing in order for that for my insurance to cover it. Yeah, so our we usually give a package of six sheets of paper, biomechanical, how the orthotic was made, gain and out, well, everything they need. But yeah, so the one side is completely healed, sealed, not open. And actually we're getting to the whole point where the whole thing is completely closed. But because there was just so many thick layers on top, it's those layers that are cracking. So it's going to be really unbelievable for you to really see what these heels look like after. Doing okay? Yeah. What's your favorite type of video to watch? Um, honestly, the ones where like you get in there and then all of a sudden there's like pus or something. I don't know <laughs> why, but those ones are super, super satisfying. Or when you, um, there was one where you helped out someone who they had like just a massive amount of overgrown skin. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you said in the video, you were doing other employments in between it. Oh yes, 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 yes. And I was just like the, the sheer like strain on your arm that that must have been to remove all that. It is a lot, it is a lot. I know exactly who you're talking about. That's a, a long-term patient. That, that's what gave me all the, the arm strength when I first started out. Actually, I was having this conversation with my wife the other day. She's like, his forearms must be so strong. <laughs> She's like, it's like unreal, the strength in his forearms, probably. But you know what? It's, it's a lot, actually, almost like, I feel like a barber, like a flick of the wrist for the people, for barbers to get like a nice fade. It's the same thing using the blade. A lot of it sometimes is more wrist action. But yeah, when it's thick, thick, heavy cows, it's just like, it burns. I guess the more you do it too, like the easier it gets. You you get used to it. It's not like anything with running a marathon, you know how to pace yourself. You're giving me a good workout today. <laughs> but it's it, it's funny because my wife's like, you have like you have toe bro feet, you need to go. Like, no <laughs> way. There's no way I have toe bro feet. And then I I was putting holes in our sheets. And she kind of gave me an ultimatum, like either go see Tobro and get it fixed or I have to pay for the sheets now. Because normally she's the one who buys them. So you just see me because you don't want to pay for sheets, gotcha, gotcha. Well, I mean, at the rate I was going through, it's getting a little expensive. <laughs> what I'll get you to do in a second is just lift your heel and you'll take a, a look at the back. First glance. So we're down to where it's pretty flat. Okay, take a look. Oh, I like that. Here, can you see well? Do you want me to take a picture with your phone for a moment and show you? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Because it'll be amazing to see. Awesome. Let me take that. Oh, I have like a human being foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a human. You're still a human. It's not like a jagged monstrosity anymore. Like how, how's that look? It looks good. Right? So you see how there's no true open crack? You can see the groove, but it's closed. And so now the medicine can actually get in there and, uh, or the cream to actually work. That's, that's the big thing. The moisturizer could not get in there. But this is the issue. The moment, let's say we 
stop buffing down that hard skin and it starts to build up again or we're not removing the pressure, we're gonna be in the exact same boat. So it's just one of these things, you always have to be very mindful of the footwear you're using that has a lot of cushioning and padding and that we're always maintaining it, unfortunately, a little bit on your own, but a little bit here as well, both. But it looks so good. So, again, that didn't hurt at all? No. Were you nervous about this hurting? Not really. I, um, it's one of those things, like, I've seen you work, so I'm pretty sure you're not gonna, like, mangle me. So... Not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, even if it hurts a little bit, the pain, like, the pain that I'm in normally in a day is will be relieved, right? So... But yeah, it looks amazing, right? The other foot. It's, uh all the way down to where the skin is attached. So I think maybe switching to the more cushion cotton compression sock that has a little bit more padding in the heel. And somehow like there's, it's a crazy contraption. Have you ever seen those like gel heel cushions that slip on? Um, I have. I know the problem is gonna make the shoe very tight but we need something that's gonna cushion the back of the heel as well because it's just rubbing against the shoe and no one's ever taken it down like that before correct no have you ever seen another foot specialist for this um i was supposed to see one just before covid yep um and then it just it never happened and then it was like i called a reschedule and then they would call me when I was at work and then it just was like a back and forth thing and then finally it just was frustrated enough that I was like you know what it is what it is so the crack seems much bigger on the right foot and so to me that's just your your heavier foot that you're putting more pressure on standing maybe leaning more on it so if we were to maybe even out the pressure a little bit as well that would else also help um, I spend most of my time like at work building the right side of the car mm -hmm. so that could have something to do with it because I'm turning to a specific way more frequently than the other way. Mm -hmm. Do you twist or pivot a lot? Uh, I pivot quite a bit, yeah. So the twisting in the boot, that movement definitely causes a lot of people to get lots of calluses, corn, hard skin because of the friction inside. So I know it's a lot of wasted energy but sometimes moving the whole foot a little bit better or finding a way where it's not twisting as much could potentially help really reduce how much it builds up. It's all caused by pressure. We gotta reduce the pressure. So again, the thicker compression sock, gel heel cushion, possibly some sort of gel protector on the back side of the shoe to reduce, again, pressure. And then that twisting movement might really do the trick. And then of course, moisturizing and routine buffing and scraping. This side's much better. Well, you're gonna be saving lots of bed sheet money now. I mean, that, that, that is the goal. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind, of, what kind of themed videos does your, your life, wife like to watch? The, what kind of Tobro ones? Um, I feel like she just like, kind of wants the, the grosser ones. The ones where you're like, you should be uncomfortable watching it, but for some reason she's just right there in it. How'd you guys find those videos or, and how long you been watching them? Um, I think we've been watching them since, since you started. No! Yeah, like it's been, what? it's been a long time that we've been watching them. Cause we would watch them before we even bought our house. So, Man, thank you so much for the support. Um, and then, yeah, it just, it's one of those things, they're just a staple in my household. We watch them. <laughs> and like, we'll find one and we're like, oh, look at this. But I think she likes them a lot too because she's a super compassionate person. So she knows like how terrible it can be when your feet are messed up. So like watching someone go from like a condition where they're in so much pain to a place where they're like not in pain anymore is really, that's the, I think the satisfying part for her. 
and I think that's the one thing that really keeps me engaged and, and happy with work is because like the end result is so satisfying that people can feel better that it's so rewarding. Uh, I enjoy it. So everything's looking really good. Actually, now you ask, I think I remember the first video that got us started. It was the guy who kicked a garbage bag. Oh, <laughs> it's Splinter. And yeah, <laughs> and it, it like it was in there forever. He went to the emergency room. He went here and he went there, and nobody could get this thing out of him. And then you got it out. So I got a good one coming up in the next few weeks. Another crazy case. Um, again, they wanted to put a cast on her foot, and they told her that she's just gonna have to live with it. And it's just like, what the heck is going on? And just bowing, like she, oh. Six days with emergency care and no one wanted to do anything. And the, the surgeon, orthopedic surgeon didn't want to touch it, say it's not for him. They referred to the plastic surgeon department. No one said, oh, that's not for them. Then they referred to the fracture clinic and they said, oh, we're just gonna put a cast and you just kind of live with it. She can't even walk and he just says, well, just, you're just gonna have to deal with it. Yeah, it's sometimes like, some of the stories I hear about foot, that's a little sore. Okay. Um, I hear about like foot care and stuff like that. Like some people just don't, they don't know. And rather than say like, I don't know, it's like, okay, well, we're just gonna do what we do all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, everyone was scared to just perform any little small pr procedure on the foot. Um, you know, they're afraid of causing some damage or they don't know how the foot's gonna heal. But the, the, really, the human body is amazing. So many ingrowns that go to the emergency room or uh, yeah, hospitals and it's just, unfortunately, it's just, they don't do enough of it, right? So they don't know how to manage it well. So yeah, it's, it's I can't believe you've been watching for a while, that's awesome. It's been really tough to try to maintain doing all the Tobro stuff now that I have a, a, a one and a half, almost two year old. That's what's killed me the last year and a half, two years. But I'm, he starts daycare next week and that's gonna take a lot of stress off of us. And so it's gonna be really good to get back in. I have so much, so many videos that I have to just edit and post, so it'll be good. Well, I could even imagine like Simply doing your full-time job, plus owning a business, plus doing tow rope, plus being uh, like a husband and a father. That's a lot for anybody. It has been. I think the last couple of years it took a, a strain on me, but we're, we're doing well. We're getting to the groove. And again, now that baby Jonathan, baby tow bro is going to be going to daycare, that's going to take so much stress off mom and, and I, since we've been putting in a little bit more time, I changed my whole work schedule to to be around more. And I've just kind of let it go a little bit, so. Oh, sorry. That doesn't hear us. Yep, yep, so that's just the one, again, sensitive part where there is those edges. So that's the only place that I see that's a, not truly open, but it's sore, it's raw. Yeah. But we're getting this down nice and flat. So much, much, much better place. We're gonna buff this down, smooth it out. And now it's just a matter of us maintaining it. Again, I'm, I'm a broken record that the cushioning as much as possible, the protection from behind the shoe. You gotta think of a way, maybe if there's like a gel pad or slip that you can fit behind your foot when, before it goes into the boot, that would be massive. And you might have to start going up a whole size just to give yourself a little bit more room for the thicker sock for that gel cushion. Um, I already had to go up a size because my feet are so wide. Mm -hmm. um, and then the like the 12 wides aren't wide enough. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna buff down the heel. A little bit of cold water. And so if, if, if you're feeling good in the boot, great, but if you have to go up again, I think as long as you're cushioning, I mean, sorry, you're tying the laces snug so the foot's not moving around, that's also very important, then you'll be okay. 
but I think you should go for the thick and soft and maybe even like a gel cushion that goes just in this area here. Okay in between the sock and the back of the boot just to reduce any sort of friction. And again, thinking about the judo orthotics when we're able to, I know a little thick with you, okay? <laughs> so thick on this. But, oh, it looks amazing, 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 amazing. So, you'll see in the video and you'll see when you get home, if your wife ever takes pictures, the skin's very cloudy, okay? And it's kind of bubbly. And might, some people might think it looks like a little warty and it has these little black dots, but it's not. So this is actually, think of it like scar tissue. The, the, like you said, you've had these for so long, your whole life, that that pressure has changed the skin, physically changed it. Oh, it's okay. become thicker and tougher. Scar tissue does not stretch as much. So that's why even a little bit of pressure will cause a lot of hard skin to build up. So this is why maintenance is huge. I was not expecting that to tickle so much. <laughs> so are you gonna start your son off with the same job you had when you were a kid? Have him wash the feet? Oh my gosh. You 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 know I'm definitely gonna make him come to work and help me out and I the best part he is can't say anything because I had to do it. I completely agree. He's like, do you know what grandpa made me do? I'm give, at least I'm giving you gloves, little Jonathan. I had no gloves back in the day. So it, it is kind of crazy the things that were done like without <laughs> more of a light. Yeah. Oh, let me take this down. Um, a lot of foot specialists back in the day would be buffing, I know it's gonna be really ticklish, uh, would be buffing down fungal nails with no mask. And fungal dust in the air really caused a lot of people to get lung cancer. So podiatry in the States is like ranked, I think top five for one of the most dangerous professions. Because the dust and particles that we could potentially be breathing in are pretty harmful. So yeah, back in the day, no mask, no nothing. I remember being a kid and my orthodontist would work with her gloves. That's crazy, right? And he, like, he'd wash his hands ahead of time, but he would always work without gloves. Yeah. And now looking back on it, I was like, that man put his bare hands in my <laughs> mouth. He had no idea where I was or what I was doing. <laughs> And that's the thing, right? It's not just about where they're coming from. It's like, well, who are they doing it to, right? Okay, that looks amazing. So let me put some moisturizer on there. So this is a great first start. We got to go very, very low, even in the first appointment. So now it's just a matter of maintaining it. But you'll see that the tissue is a little bit different. And this is a sign that the tissue has been scarred and changed over all these years of pressure. So it is gonna be very much prone to the heart skin buildup, but now that we've got it to a different level, it's gonna feel very different. How does this just feel me, just feeling this area? It feels weird, like it feels so much more sensitive than it has ever before, because usually there's a couple spots where I just don't feel anything. Like I can feel if I push on it, but I don't feel like a touch or anything like that. And I guess that's just because that's all the dead skin, right? So we want to keep it this flat all the time. So when you get home, tell wife to take lots of pictures. Just have an idea. You're going to get yourself a nice thick indoor slipper or flip-flop to protect those heels, cushion them all the time. Summertime, you shouldn't ever go out with just like a normal flip-flop. Everything has to be super thick, padded, and soft. You're wearing a good shoe now. We always want a good running shoe. As much as you can, it has a really thick shock absorbing sole. And that's that. Right. You like these crazy foot videos? Then make sure you follow for more videos like this.